So, I had some of the most fantastic footballers, and probably from time to time, I call them all world class, you know? But in the final analysis, when I think about it, those four players we spoke about made a fantastic difference in periods of the games. And I think that was the reason. Welcome to the Big D Speaks for a nice little cheeky episode today. And it's based on a video that Alex Ferguson made, the great Sir Alex Ferguson, our illustrious manager of Manchester United for however long he was, 25 years, um, probably more. Anyway, this was the little clip from an interview that he did for The Guardian, where he talks about the only world-class players that he managed throughout his entire career. And the only world-class players, I'm not going to name them right now, I'm going to let him explain in the clip, but there was one, two, three, four. He said there was only four. Four world-class players that he ever managed in his entire uh, run as United manager, which is, <laughs> I mean, I think he's being cheeky a little bit. I think he's the ultimate wind-up um, element of truth to what he's saying. But anyway, 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 let's watch this little clip. This book has come out and been in the papers as well. I'm going to read you the portion. If you'd like to follow along, everybody, it's on page 112. Um, let me read you this bit of the book, OK? I don't mean to demean or criticise any of the great or very good footballer, footballers who played for me during my 26-year career at United, but there were only four who were world-class. Cantona, Giggs, Ronaldo and Scholes. And of the four, Cristiano was like an ornament on top of a Christmas tree. He was the one who added that final touch. Now, people have been debating and talking and arguing about this ever since they saw that quote in the book. You must have known you'd started quite a debate with that. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't, honestly. And I think I think I want my players to look at that and probably agree because I think as a fan be watching football matches with a young kid. I was always looking at the centre forwards or the wingers, the players who create, could create, make goals, score goals. That was always been my mantra in terms of watching a game of football. So I had some of the most fantastic footballers and probably from time to time, I call them all world class, you know? But in the final analysis, when I think about it, those four players we spoke about made a fantastic difference in periods of the games. And I think that was the reason. I'm not demeaning or criticizing any of those great players I had. I was privileged to have them. But don't forget one thing. Those four players never won the trophies. The team always won the trophies. You know, we can never win it with individuals. We needed the backbone of a team, always. <laughs> and a, an, an interesting thing about well, I'm talking about the players who entertain and score the goals. In the last 50 Ballon d'Ors, only two defenders have ever won it. Now, debatable what you call Franz Beckenbauer, because I would have thought he was a playmaker of the, the Bayern team and the great Dutch German team. And the only defender was Cannavaro. He's the only defender that's ever won it in 50 years. So, somebody's right and somebody's wrong. It's one opinion, by the way. It's <laughs> my opinion. I think I'm qualified to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but to think there was only four players in his entire run as United manager that were world class is just, I mean, it's just silly. And anyone with a brain cell knows that. So, And I don't think he actually believes that either. Because there's no way you can tell me that Roy Keane wasn't world class in his prime. There's no way you can tell me David Beckham wasn't world class in his prime. I mean, he 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 came run, running up for the Ballon d'Or twice. See, it wasn't a fluke. He came uh, running up twice, David Beckham. And to, to be even mentioned on a list for a Ballon d'Or suggests that at some point in your career, you are going to be world class. Peter Schmeichel. Rude van Nistelrooy, he couldn't stop scoring. I mean, Sir Alex is talking there about um, players that influence games, that make the difference, that score the goals, that create the goals. 
Ruud van Nistelrooy made the difference. He scored the goals. Um, as I say, Roy Keane, the influence that he had. Are you telling me that um, Nemanja Vidic and um, Rio Ferdinand and uh, Peter Schmeichel or Edwin van der Sar, what, they didn't influence the games that they played in? He even said to himself at one point in his career that um, goal scorers will win you games, but defences will win you titles. Now, how could a defence win you a title if they are not world class? Yeah, I think he's being cheeky. I, I think he's just talking mainly there about um, you know the kinds of players that he likes to watch. But I think, objectively speaking. To define world class, you have to be, say, one of the top 10 players in each given position that you play. Does that make sense? Am I making sense here? Hang on. So, if you are a right back and you are one of the 10 best right backs in the world, then you are a world class right back. That's it. So, if you're going to call a right back a footballer, then you have to say that one of the best right backs in the world is one of the best players in the world. And thus, they are world class in that given position. It's the same with Cristiano Ronaldo. You put Cristiano Ronaldo at right back, he's not going to be very good. You put him up front, and he's world class. You put Gary Neville in his prime um, uh, up front, he's going to be crap. But he put him at right back, which is where he played, and he was phenomenal. He was one of the best right backs in the world at one point in his, in his career. Massively underrated. Anyway, who else was world class? Um, let me think. Wayne Rooney! Oh my God, Wayne Rooney! Probably the best British player in the Premier League era. If that doesn't make you world class... He's Manchester United's all-time top scorer. But of course, Sir Alex is not going to put Wayne Rooney in that list because they had a little bit of a fall on that. But that, listen, he's, it's Alex Ferguson. He can say these things. That's absolutely fine. But I just wanted to um, sort of um, talk about the four players that he mentioned there. Um, Paul Scholes, fair enough, world class. Ryan Giggs, fair enough. He was one. Of, he was probably the, the best winger in the world at one point. Um, who else did he say? Um, 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 Cristiano Ronaldo. Well, of course, Cristiano. But I just want to point something out with Eric Cantona. I personally want to say I don't think Eric Cantona was a world-class player. Now. Just to preface this opinion, I loved Eric Cantona. I still love Eric Cantona. Eric Cantona is an absolute legend and icon of Manchester United. Of course he is. And I would say he is um, easily top five most important players that have ever played for Manchester United alongside like say Roy Keane, Sir Bobby Charlton, Duncan Edwards, George Best, you know, I think that's six. But the point is, he's massively influential. And another thing with Eric Cantona, he was the final piece of the puzzle that sent United on their way to dominating the Premier League and getting that first title under their belt in 92-93. So, phenomenal for Manchester United in that era. But... He wasn't world class because you can only be world class in your given era depending on the context of your situation. Now, Eric Cantona at the time was brilliant for Manchester United, but Manchester United played in the Premier League and in the Premier League at the time wasn't the best league in the world. It was the fourth best league in the world. Maybe third. Serie A was the dominant league in the world at the time. That's where all the best players went to cut their teeth. Um, La Liga, fair enough. We, probably second best league. And then I would put, say probably the German league. 
maybe even the French League at the time. But Eric Cantona, if he was doing what he was doing for Manchester United, but he was doing it, doing it in Italy for, say, AC Milan or Juventus against defenders like um, Paolo Maldini, Franco Baresi, for instance, and scoring 15, 16, 17 goals and winning Serie A titles, fair enough. I would class him as being world class, but he wasn't. And he didn't. Uh, if he was taking France to World Cup glory or Euros glory as the main man, he would be world class, but he didn't. If he was winning European Cups with Manchester United in that era, being the man, the talisman of the team, then fair enough, but he didn't. Now, he had the chances to prove himself as world class. Um, he was the main man for France in, 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 in their qualifying campaign for 1994, the USA in 1994, but they didn't qualify. He didn't play for Juventus. He didn't play for Milan. It, it, no big club would touch him. It, we got him by fluke. It's it's well documented. We got him by fluke. Leeds United gave him a chance. He did he did okay with them, and then they Leeds United tried to sign Dennis Irwin from Manchester United. We said no, and just a moment of inspiration. Alex Ferguson said. To Martin Edwards, the 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 the, uh, the chairman of Manchester United at the time, ask about Eric Cantona. We need a striker. He got him, and then everything was just a match made in heaven. And he became the best player in the league. He became the best player in the fourth best league in the world. But no big other big club would touch him because he had a lot of bad, you know, a lot of temperamental issues in France back at the. You know, back in the day, um, so he didn't do it. Now the one Eric Cantona's chance at being world class came in the ninety six ninety seven season, where Manchester United really had a good run at the Champions League, and we got to the semi final. Now we played Juventus along the way in the group stages and if I remember correctly they beat us twice 1-0 now and Eric Cantona was the focal point in that team at that time when we played Dortmund in the semi-final we got beat twice 1-0 and Dortmund would go on to win the European Cup that year so the two world class player, um, teams that we played at that time I remember watching those games and I don't remember Eric Cantona having much of an influence on those games. And that's the difference between a, a very good player and a world-class player. And it is making the difference in the biggest games for your team. Now, if Eric Cantona was world-class, he'd have done something in one of those games that would have made the difference, that would have got United over the line. That they might have beaten Juventus, they might have... Um, you know, got a draw at the Stadio della Alpe, or and they might have got a draw um, away in Dortmund, and they might have got the winner um, at Old Trafford, and maybe they would have played in the final that year. But that didn't happen. So I'm sorry, but I know it's all opinion. But when you and and I would love to say Eric Cantona was world class and, and class and just be a biased United fan. I would, but I can't. Because logically, he wasn't. Because he didn't prove it. Unfortunately. So I have to disagree with Sir Alex Ferguson there. But any, but hey, who am I to say? Who am I to say? Alex Ferguson is the greatest manager of all time. And I'm a YouTuber that watches the game. But hey ho, what do you guys think? If you like this video, please comment, like, share, subscribe. If you disagree with anything that I've said in this video, particularly the Eric Cantona thing, who else was world class as well? Tell me, or who wasn't world class? Who was overrated for Manchester United? You tell me, put it in the comments. Anyway, I've had enough. Time for bed. See you later.